In this video, I want to take a look at creating a simple save and load system for Unity. The system will allow levels designed in the editor to be quickly saved and easily loaded either in the editor or at runtime. Now, if you're looking for a system that will save levels during runtime, maybe to allow players to save data or to create custom levels, I'll be making use of Easy Save to add a few modifications to the original system to allow it to work during runtime. I did this in my project to allow players to create levels and share those levels with the Steam Workshop which will be the topic of my next video. I created the level save and load system during the 48 hour game jam where I created Where's My Lunch. During that time, creating individual scenes for each level was out of the question. And frankly, I'm not convinced it would be a good plan even if I had more time. Because what happens if I need to change the UI? What happens if I wanna redesign the layout? And yeah, sure, I could use prefabs or load multiple scenes, but how much easier would it be to have just one scene and then load in the parts for different levels? No more juggling scenes, no scene manager, just simple data files with all the needed data for a given level. And yes, that's the way I want to do it. Now to be super clear, the basic setup does not save data during runtime. This can only save data in the editor, but it can load data both in the editor and during runtime, which for my purposes made it perfect. And I suspect for most projects will be good enough to at least get started. Now, before we dive into the code too much, let's take a step back and talk about the big idea, the big concept behind the save and load system. The main idea is built on the idea that scenes are made up of various game objects. The code on each object stays the same from level to level, and the only real difference between levels is the number of objects and the positioning of those objects. And when you get down to it, this is probably true of many or most indie games. So this means all the system needs to do is record the position and the type of the object into a data object. This data object can then be stored in a list on a game level scriptable object. This means the game level becomes a project asset and the list of object data can be easily iterated through to recreate the original scene. And that's it. That's the big idea behind the save and load system. Now, for some of you, you might be able to stop the video and go build your own system. For the rest of you, I'm gonna to try to do my best to show how I implemented this system in Where's My Lunch. Now, it's not gonna be a perfect follow along, copy the code style video, but hopefully it'll give you enough traction to build your own system. So let's jump in. Before objects can be saved, we need a way to find them. So to keep things simple and easy, I created a save level object class that can go on each scene object that needs to be saved. The class is just one field, which is an enum that identifies what type the object is. Then all that needs to happen is to search the scene for save level objects, and we get an array of objects to be saved. This all happens in the level manager class, or more specifically in the save level function. Now do note that this function is never called because I'm using Odin Inspector to create buttons that can be used from the inspector. If you haven't heard of Odin, and full disclosure, I do work for them. It's a pretty amazing tool, and in this case is saving me a lot of time by not having to create a custom inspector script. If you don't have Odin and you don't want to create a custom inspector, you can always use the old trick of using a Boolean and checking the value of a Boolean in the update function. You can then use this in combination with the execute and edit mode attribute, and you get similar, albeit clumsier functionality. Once the objects have been found, we need a place to keep them, and that happens in the game level class. The game level class is a scriptable object, which means that the game level objects will be a project asset, and that makes them easy to handle in so many ways. The game level object is simple and straightforward. It has a list of level object info that will contain an enum of the object type and the position of that object. There are also two important functions. The first clears the list of objects, and this function gets called in the save level function on the level manager to ensure that objects are only saved once in the game level object. The second function adds a level object to the scriptable object. A save level object is given as an input parameter and then used in the class constructor to create a new level object info instance. This new instance is then added to the level object list. If we then take a look at the level object info class, we'll see a constructor that takes in the save level object, which is a mono behavior, and stores the needed information. Also note that the level object info class is not a mono behavior. This class exists only in the list on the scriptable object. Now quickly returning to our save function on the level manager. With all the objects found and a data structure to save them, we need to clear any saved objects on the game level object, and then we need to iterate through the array of save level objects and add them to the game level object. So up to this point, things aren't too complicated. Sure, there are a handful of similarly named classes and you could definitely criticize my naming, but the big idea isn't too tough to understand. And when it comes to loading objects, it's still not bad, but there are a few additional complications. 
The biggest issue is to link or connect the object type with a prefab. Now to do this, I want a strongly typed connection, not some janky switch statement or block of if statements that are dependent on the wall object being the third prefab in a list and the bomb object being the fifth. Note of that in so many ways. That will 100% for sure break. So it's gonna take a little bit of effort to make this work. I created yet another class that will contain the enum for the type of object and a reference to the corresponding prefab. This class is the save level prefab class, not to be confused with the similarly named save level object class. You can see a list of this type in the level manager. This list will hold references to the prefab that corresponds to the level object type. This list can then be used to instantiate the correct prefab. Now you can populate this list manually, or again, if you have Odin Inspector, you can use some of their magic to populate it automatically. But I'm going to skip that part for the sake of clarity, as it doesn't really add to the overall concept. You just need to make sure that each value of the enum is in the list with a corresponding prefab. So at this point, all we need to do in order to load the level is to iterate through the list of level object info that is on the game level object and instantiate the corresponding prefabs. In the load current level function, we double check that the current level isn't null. We clear the current level, i.e. the scene, and then iterate through the list of level object info that is saved on the game level scriptable object. For each level object info instance, we then iterate through the list of save level prefabs to get and instantiate the corresponding prefab. Now it's definitely a mouthful, but I hope the steps are making sense. Now there's certainly some inefficiency to this method. I think creating a dictionary might be a better idea since dictionaries are faster at lookup than lists and could avoid the nested loops. The dictionary could use the level object type enum as a key and the object prefabs as a value. Now the hitch to this plan is that dictionaries are not serialized by Unity, which means we can't see them and add to them in the inspector. However, dictionaries can be serialized by Odin Inspector, which means you can add prefabs in the inspector. I might make this change down the road, but for now, the inefficiency isn't a big problem as a few extra milliseconds to load a level won't be noticed, and levels might at worst have a couple hundred objects. So at this point, if it's not broken, I'm not gonna fix it. Also, using an object pooling solution could improve performance, but once again, this is happening when we load a level and not while the player is trying to interact with the level. So a small lag spike isn't currently an issue I feel like I need to design around. If it does become an issue, it should be easy to bolt on an object pooling system. You may have noticed that there are two other functions in the level manager, a load level function and a clear level function. The first is a public function and can be called to change the current level and then load that new level. Nothing too fancy, but it's a good to have function. And the second simply clears the current level by iterating through all the save level objects in the scene and destroying them. Once again, there's some inefficiency here that an object pooling solution might be able to help, but I'm not too worried about it at this point. And just a reminder, there are free Steam keys to my game down in the comments below. All I ask is that you leave a comment letting us know which key you used. Anyways, back to the video. Now, if we take a step back, the system as a whole is working really well. That is, if you're doing all of your saving in the editor, which for the game jam was exactly what I was doing. But I now want to go further than that. I want to allow players to design and share levels via the Steam Workshop. This means I need to save data at runtime, and scriptable objects can't do that. A few years ago, I purchased EasySave from the Asset Store, and while it might be overkill for this project, it's really easy to use and capable of saving data to an external file, and it will work at runtime. One more huge upside to EasySave is that custom types are easily added, which allows all of the fields of a class to be saved. This means it's possible to save an entire class, for example, the game level scriptable object, which is going to make things surprisingly easy. Once the custom type has been added, it's simply a matter of creating an instance of the game level scriptable object, and this will work at runtime, but won't create a project asset, and then populating the fields of that scriptable object with the correct data. Now I've hidden most of this step as it's very dependent on the project and is very straightforward to do. With the fields populated, we can then in one line save the game level data to a file of our choosing. Okay, so now we need to load the data back into the game. And this is a slight bit tougher, but it's still pretty easy to do. And to do this, we need to check if the save file exists. If not, we need to stop what we're doing to avoid an error. If the save file does exist, we then need to check for the key that would saved all the level data. In my case, I call that key level data. And if that key exists, we can clear the current level, load the data into an instance of a game level scriptable object, then simply call the same load level function with the game level instance as an input parameter. So there you go. That's the entirety of the save and load system. 
Now again, there are a lot of classes and I likely could have done a better job in naming them, but the overall system is pretty simple. So I hope that was interesting and better yet useful for you and your game. And until next time, happy game designing.